to week 43. By this point, we are in Colorado. So in the morning, we just went to some bookstores and then drove out to Great Sand Dunes National Park, which are the tallest sand, naturally occurring sand dunes in North America. And they were really cool. You're just like driving in the middle of nowhere and then all this sand appears and it's like you're at the beach without the sea. So me and Sarah, um, we came out to see these and then went back into town for dinner and then came back and I went on a big walk in the evening. So here are some videos and thoughts from my hike up the sand dunes. Ignore how pale my feet are here, but the sand was very reminiscent of white sands that just moves with you as you move. I made it to the next peak that I was aiming for. I was down there, now I'm up here. The view is pretty incredible. National parks. I just here's some thoughts for you. I'm driving along today. I love driving that car. I love driving through America. I feel like I'm really seeing it and experiencing it. Um, I was just driving along today, and I just realized that you know I've like loved my time in America um, so so incredibly much. And I was kind of like, <laughs> will I ever feel the joy that I felt? in my study abroad here again because literally every single day was filled with at least one moment of joy if not multiple just because of the things I was doing and the people I was talking to and like almost like the image that I had and the friends that I'd built and the, the character growth that I'd gone through and I've kind of been thinking that like when I go back to Dundee I feel like I'm going to regress and revert back to like less chatty, less friendly which I kind of will and kind of have to because of my dissertation. But I tried to along today and I was just like, no, the character development, the personality growth that I've done in America is all me. I'm still taking me and my experiences and my changes back to Dundee with me. I'm in my 20s, I'm in like the first decade where I'm in control of the entire decade. And I remember the entire decade. 20 to 30 is so full of possibility and things that are coming next. I'm so excited to be on the Doctors Without Borders committee and there's just lots that I'm so, like, so excited for again about my life in Scotland at least for the next year and then wherever life takes me after that. So I've been in sad girl era for the last like two or three weeks um, but I'm excited to get back to my Dundee friends and catch up with them. Oh my god, I'm using burnt horn. Exercising in red. Um, and I just live out the rest of my life. And I've been thinking about aging, mortality, because 
I've been reading books that just dealt with those issues recently. And honestly, I think Coldplay was an emotional reset for me. And now I'm like, everything's fine, everything's great in fact. And I'm excited to come back to Dundee. And I'm excited to live out my next decade. And my zest for life is back. Those are my thoughts for today, for this week. And I'll see you when I get to the top. Can you believe that I took this photo with my own phone camera? No editing, no filters on this. This is just the view and the photo that I was seeing. And I walked all the way along this ridge on the left-hand side to the peak on the right-hand side. Incredible. And I know I'm spending a lot of time on these sand dunes, but it was just like nothing I've ever really seen before in my like memory. Um, and just like going out on that hike and being surrounded by nothing but sand hills. This is me pointing at the car park where I started from. Um, it was just so, so incredible and like just the walk that I needed at that time. Um, the National Park Service actually encourages you to wander and get lost in these hills, but they just go so far that like you know because of the it's so hilly you tend to lose sight of like the car park so i feel like that would be kind of dangerous okay you could not hear a word that i was saying in this clip because it's just wind noise but i made it to the second peak that i was aiming for and this was the view the sand dunes just going for ages the mountains the sun setting behind a cloud and i was just talking about um how worth it the climb was although i am going to talk about how tough it actually was to walk all the way up there because they are pretty tall hills, so it's like a bit of a hill walk anyway. But because you're walking on sand, it's like walking on a Stairmaster. Because every single step you take, your foot sinks down or you sink back a little bit. So you have to take about three steps for every normal step that you would take in normal life. Um, also, I went barefoot, which was a bit stupid. Because your toes kind of curl round to give you extra grip in the sand. And they started cramping on my walk back, so I had to sit down and stretch my feet out. Um, and then as the sun wasn't on the sand anymore, the sand was getting colder and colder and my feet, my feet were suffering, but it was super cool. It was really super cool. Again, you couldn't hear anything I was saying, but here I'm talking about my tan lines and my thighs, my calves, and then my sock line, super intense, the most tanned I've ever been. Now look how deep your feet sink into the sand. Wild. Wild. Um, so yeah, it was kind of an effort, like trying to get back to the car park. Um, and then also you kind of find yourself at the top of like drop-offs of sand and have to be like, oh, I guess I'm going round. So it took me a bit longer to get back than I thought it would. <laughs> Here's another demonstration, excuse that hiccup of, so at one point I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go down a steep hill. So I was going down this hill, the sand is moving like water. I'm like, I really hope I don't cause a sand avalanche behind me, but it was so much fun walking down these hills. Um, you just kind of glide down them super smoothly. And it's great. It's um, like it feels like no effort at all coming down them. And then I get to the bottom and I kind of can't see the car park because it kind of blends in. Um, so yeah, like it would be quite easy to get lost in these dunes. Luckily, I have a decent sense of direction. So I knew which way I was heading and I just headed off in that direction. But yeah, I would not go if you don't trust your senses of direction. And then as I was walking back, the sun was starting to properly set, so we were getting some nice sunset colours in the sky, and there were some people set up with tripods and cameras and stuff to catch the fading sun. And then there were loads of deer and elk along the road, and I had to break very sharply to not hit one um, as we were driving to our sleep spot for the night. So yeah, that is the sand dunes and more elk by the road. And my be real for the day, hopefully making everyone jealous. Okay, next day, finally, we're in Denver, the capital city of Colorado. Um, we went to some secondhand bookstores. I was looking for more Stephen King, and I also wanted to buy On the Road by Jack Kerouac because I knew that some of it was set in Denver. And here is a sentence I relate to. It says, I just won't sleep. I decided there were so many other interesting things to do. And if that doesn't summarize my last semester in North Carolina, I don't know what does. So we were just wasting a few hours. We slept and read in a park in Denver um, because we were waiting to for the evening because we were going to see Phoebe Bridges, a singer at Red Rocks Amphitheater, um, which is like these red rocks um, that they turned into an amphitheater and different artists go and perform there. And it's a really cool experience. I'm not a big Phoebe Bridges fan, but to see her like in that location was really, really cool. <laughs> Here we are, and you can see all of the city lights behind the stage. It was just like a really cool open air, open air 
concert experience. Here are some things. <laughs> And some more photos and next we headed out to boulder which is about 40 45 minutes from denver and it was a stunning town i found an apo jumper in a vintage store and there's a university in boulder and it was just beautiful like really nicely set up the town was really nice nice shops um lots of green spaces and parks like i would happily live in boulder then we went to see the stanley hotel which inspired the overlook hotel in the shining and then rocky mountain national park In Rocky Mountain National Park and there's snow up here oh my god um, I absolutely adore Colorado Denver was like quite a nice city it was still not as good as European cities but like one of the better American ones and then today we drove into Boulder um, and Boulder was an incredibly beautiful and lovely town like I would absolutely love to live in Boulder one day um, and I think I'd still prefer to live in San Francisco because I'm still on my city hype. Like I want to move to London. I'd love to live in San Francisco. But if I wanted to like move to a mid-sized town, then Boulder is like the favorite town that I've ever been in, period. Not even just um, America. And it's just a lovely area and like a cool university and really cool people walking around, good vibes, good weather. Um, and it's also like a 25 minute walk, not walk, sorry, a 25 minute drive from Denver. So it's close enough to the city if you want to go into the city. Boulder, 10 out of 10, incredible. Now, Rocky Mountain National Park is really pretty, very foresty. Um, I'm really nervous because I see a bear while I'm out here by myself. I've just gone for like a 10 minute walk along a path in the woods. Um, but yeah, in bear country, Colorado is stunning, I think. Apart from California, which you know I absolutely loved just because of the variety of it, Colorado, I think, is my second favorite state um, in America out of all of the ones I've visited, not even just on this trip. So that's good. Um, I love it here. I'm excited to go to Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park tomorrow. Um, but Colorado, big thumbs up from me. New Mexico was just like fine. Um, Arizona, big thumbs up from me, but I wouldn't live there. Colorado, big thumbs up, and I would live here. Here's a picture of me on my walk, and then me and Sarah went for a little walk around the lake, and there was a moose in the lake, which was pretty cool. Um, and then we drove out to our sleep spot for the evening, which was overlooking all these forests and hills and stuff, and there were a few other people around as well, which was quite nice. Um, ready for the car sleeping, and then sunrise the next morning was stunning, and these beautiful pink clouds. Um, some people running past, some people walking their dogs past the car. Super nice, super good vibes, wonderful atmosphere. And then we drove out to Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, which is one of the least visited national parks. Um, and you can see why. It's, it was cool. It was a canyon. Um, but it wasn't like an absolutely must-see. Although I do have to admit that I do love a good canyon. By this point in the trip, me and Sarah were really tired, so we booked an Airbnb for the night, which was just a room in some family's house. And that was really nice. We watched a movie with them, and they told us stories about their hunting, because they go hunting and showed us photos. They hunt mountain lions, and they also had this um, like map on the wall where every, all of their guests put a pin in where they've come from, which was pretty cool. So that was our stay in Colorado. The next day, we drove out to the Four Corners Monument, where Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah all meet, so you can stand in all four states at once, which, you know, it was a bit gimmicky, it was a bit touristy, but we had to go see it when those were our, like, four states that we were coming to see, and it was worth the $8 entrance fee, I would say. $8 per person, though, not per person, so a little bit of a rip-off, but it's a pretty cool place, so, like, we had to go see it, um, and that, even if it was a little bit slightly underwhelming. This was our sleep spot for the night by a river. It was very nice, very calming. 
Um, I've been reading a lot of Stephen King on this trip. I started off by reading Pet Cemetery, and then I moved on to Needful Things. And um, later on in the trip, I read Gerald's Game as well. So I'm on a big Stephen King binge at the moment. Regardless, we then drove out to Monument Valley, which is one of the most iconic places in America. Um, you can see on the road here the like iconic shot. It's in Forrest Gump. It's in quite a few films. It was really cool to actually see it with my own eyes, the thing that I've seen photos of and um, I've seen photographs so many times. And then, you know, to see it with my own eyes is always a little bit mind-blowing. So then me and Sarah, we did a little hike near Monument Valley out to this arch. Um, and we got some cool photos, if I do say so myself. It was like a very small walk. It was maybe like 10 minutes off the road. Um, but really cool just to be in like Red Rocks again when most of Colorado had been really foresty and green. It was nice to come back to this more dusty kind of um, Martian looking environment and atmosphere. I forgot to mention that we saw a wild horse on our way to one of our sleep spots this week, so it made up for not seeing them on the Outer Banks. Then we drove out to see Sunset in Canyonlands. Canyonlands is like one of the least uh, least rated national park, and it's kind of right. Tumbleweed, tumbleweed. I didn't get a video of any tumbleweed rolling, but I did see it, and there was one stationary. This is Sunset in Canyonlands. Um, it was like quite nice to watch, but then we drove out to a different sleep spot, and then the next morning we drove into Moab, um, our petrol was nearly empty by the time we got to a petrol station and we did this hike in Moab um, which is like a really well-known hiking area near Arches National Park and I absolutely loved this hike. I have a whole post on my Instagram of photos just from this hike because we, we um, hiked out to this arch and sat under it a while and it was just a really cool hike because there was like a bit of scrambling and there was a ladder in it you walked across a train track in it it was just excellent i'll let the videos and photos speak for themselves And we're near the end, I promise, we drove out to Capitol Reef National Park, which has petroglyphs in it. If you look closely, there's a little family drawn on the wall, which I think is so, so cool that people have been drawing self-portraits of themselves for years and years and years. And then was, as we left Capitol Reef, this was also in Capitol Reef National Park, just this big overlook canyon thing. Here's a funny sign from McDonald's where you get one week vacation after one year. And then this night we drove six and a half hours up to Yellowstone area. Um, we just decided to drive through the night, so we both drove half the night. We arrived at Yellowstone at 5 a.m. on the Monday that will start off next week's vlog. Thanks for your patience with this one. I know it's a longer week, that's why it took me so long. I'll speak to you soon.